الحمد لله رب العالمين اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وانت خير الفاتحين اما بعد so uh, just to share with you now not preaching uh, but to share with you an, an idea to think about something to reflect upon during the whole week it's, it's not telling you what to do, what not to do. It's, um, it's more about sharing thoughts and ideas. You may agree, you may disagree. Uh, the, the idea that I would like to talk about in very brief words is about our attitude towards our Islamic history. How we teach, how we learn, our Islamic history, especially what we are saying regarding the companions, regarding the successors, regarding the Islamic empires right from Umayyad dynasty till the Ottoman dynasties. When I hear the people or the imams or the parents talking about these periods of time and how they presenting information to the audience regarding these specific periods of times. It's being taught in a way that puts these people above their human nature. It's like talking about the history of angels, not history of human beings. We tend to describe them as God-fearing people. We tend to hide equally shortcomings, weaknesses, and the mistakes. We at the same time compare our life and look bad and look down at our everyday life. And we focus only on the trouble and the negative that we are having in our life and hide also everything good in our everyday life. On the other extreme of this, you will find people look into Islamic history to the companions, to the successors and the following generations as negative, uh, with negative attitudes. They look at it in, in a very black and white thing. There is no white, all of them is, is black for them. We have some people who are using bad language with the companions, using bad language with the successors, insulting, aggressive. And I think for both attitudes, it's not right. Let's follow the method of the Quran. Let's look into the uh, middle pathway of the Quran when he talks about the companions, for example, let's focus on the companions. How the Quran teaches us to deal with the companions? Well, the Quran strikes the balance between the positive things and the negative things. The Quran praises the companions and criticizes the companions. The Quran commented on the positive things and criticized the negative things. The Quran says about the companions وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُونَ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ He says about that Allah will be pleased with the first immigrants and the helpers, those who followed them in good deeds, and they will be pleased with him. And in another ayah, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايْعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah is pleased with the believers when they swore an allegiance to you under the tree. So celebrating that. And for us, they are like that. So much respect and love. But this doesn't mean that the Quran will hide the negative and the weaknesses that the companions been through. The Quran severely criticized the companions after the battle of Uhud in a very, very strong words that been mentioned in the Quran 
in ayah 103 in surah al imran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says استصعدون ولا تلوون على أحد والرسول يدعوكم في أخراكم فأثابكم غما بغم لكي لا تحزنوا etc. He said you run away without looking back and the Prophet was calling you from behind. This is what happened in the battle of Uhud when they were defeated. And the companions according to the commentators were running in every direction. Running for what? For their life. They were so scared, running in every direction, trying to find a hiding place. And the Prophet ﷺ was calling them to come back, and the Quran says, you don't even bother to look back when the Prophet ﷺ was calling you. The Quran didn't hide that. The Quran didn't hide this information. We are embarrassed to tell our kids about that. And I'm sure some of you will not feel very comfortable when he hears that. But the Quran didn't do that. The Quran kept the balance because it's a life of human beings. In another place, the Quran explicitly, explicitly says, um, <clears throat> uh, Those who turned away during the battle, the Satan who caused them to make this mistake because some of their actions. The Quran says clearly that the shaitan was able to mislead them and lead them to mistakes. And Allah forgave them. Um, <clears throat> another ayah says, Minkum man yuridu dunya wa minkum man yuridu al-akhirah. Some of you wants the pleasure of the world. And some of you wants the pleasure of the akhirah. So this is the, this is the good thing that we need to restore when we talk. Talk about the strength, talk about the weaknesses, talk about the positive, talk about the negative. Not all the time rosy land in the past. It wasn't rosy land as you expect. Some of it is great, some of it is great examples, and some of it is not great examples. We find all the time, you will hear this, in many khutbas, many imams will stand up and cite the example of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz as an example of the complete justice, affluence, uh, because they were implementing the Sharia and Allah was happy with them, and the public treasury was full of money until they were, no one was asking for money. Well, if you, if you look into this example and just investigate it with a bit of reason, it is not reasonable. First of all, it's not reasonable. It's not reasonable at that time where the Islamic empire was just Medina, Iraq, Syria, Egypt. You can't imagine that in all of these places, all of these people in one go will become 100% of affluence and no one will need the money. But just for the sake of, of, of argument, say it is true, say this is true. This example is not enough to give us uh, enough support that Islam, everything was perfect throughout the Islamic history. And if this is the case, why Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, and he's Umar ibn al-Khattab, and the early generation, and he himself had a famine. The people starved to death. They couldn't feed themselves. Another example that you need, all, you all the time hear that, that during the Caliphate, everything was all right, Muslim were united. So what, to what extent this is true? Muslim were united, but if you expose it to the Islamic history, the wider Islamic history, it's not entirely true. There was more than one Khalifa at the same time because of conflict over power. There was Ali ibn Abi Talib عن, declaring himself Khalifa and Muawiyah عن, in Syria declaring himself Khalifa. Civil war took place because of that. If we move back in time, uh, 
Abdul Malik ibn Banawan during the Umayyad dynasty, he was the Khalifa. And uh, <clears throat> Abdullah ibn Zubair in Mecca, he also declared himself a Khalifa, and a war was declared because of that. So there was more than one caliphate at the same time to, to cite this and say everything was perfect, everything was united. I think it is not right reading of our history. There was very good example of tolerance throughout our history, especially with relation to Jews and Christians. But there was also examples of intolerance, even with Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal himself, only for a view he said about the creation of the Quran, a theological issue that the Quran is the created word of God or it was eternal, very theological issue which doesn't deserve the pain he been through. He was put in trouble and he has to suffer the consequences of his view because of lack of intolerance. So what I wanted to say <clears throat> in this brief khutbah, an idea for you to share. Think about your Islamic history. Think about it, restore the balance. Idealizing the history of a human being has a disastrous impact on the way we think. It makes us feel down about ourselves and those around us. It makes us look for another imaginative image which is not real. I suggest following the balance that the Quran teaches when we deal with our history. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa al-Aqibatul Muttaqeen wa la udwana ila ala al-Zalimeen wa ashadu an la ilaha ila Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Nasa Allah fi nihayati hadha al-liqa tayyib al-mubarak an yaj'alana min al-sayyoon al-qawla fi atabiwuna ahsana Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa nsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin Allahumma balighna mimma yurdika amalana Allahumma balighna mimma yurdika amalana Allahumma jal jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuman تفرقنا من بعده معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما وياخذ دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين